there are so many topics that we have covered in the architectural concept and now we have started one more topic in the same series as you can see on your desktop it's hub spoke topology hello everyone my name is Arun and today we are going to talk about this topology that you might have heard about it or you may have implemented already or you may have working on this kind of topology and someone else is implemented for you well there are so many teams in the uh, in the organization maybe a build team architecture would have defined the this topology build team has implemented the topology and maybe you're working on that topology so today we are going to understand what it is why we need to uh, go with this topology how this can help us and these kind of stuff and of course the architecture all right so as you can see on the screen right now we have on-prem network where we have the VPN device which is connected to this virtual network on Azure let me write this down this entire th Azure okay Azure VNet this is an Azure VNet and these two are also Azure VNets let me write down the Azure so let's try to understand first how it looks like a hub spoke topology it always looks like this there would be a hub virtual network and there are the spoke virtual networks which are connected to the hub it's not mandatory that you always have the on-prem network only then it would become a hub and spoke topology but if this is not there let's suppose this is not there even though it would be uh, hub and spoke topology you may have uh, more uh, vnets as a spoke vnets okay so with this structure with this architecture it would be clear how a hub and spoke topology looks like right there would be a hub and these are the spokes so if I have to define it a hub is a virtual network in Azure that act as a central point of connectivity to your on-premises network or maybe the other virtual networks that you have created for the isolation and the spoke are the virtual network that peer with the hub see as you can see right here and used for the isolated workloads as I said now traffic flows between the on-premises data center and the hub through either a VPN site-to-site -site VPN or the express route right so you need to think about those components if you do not have the on-premises so you don't need the this gateway because peering doesn't require the gateway and it could work like this in Azure itself okay now we understood the architecture we have the spoke we have the uh, centralized network for all the connectivity a hub vnet uh, now we need to understand the use case of this architecture well workloads deployed in different environments such as development testing and production that required shared services such as dns ids ntp ad adds windows ad i'm saying shared services are placed in the hub virtual network while each of the environment is deployed in to a spoke to maintain the isolation so what you are achieving by this you are segregating your departments your environments dev QA staging testing production with these virtual networks and all the virtual networks or the spoke virtual networks are using the shared services from the hub virtual network in the hub virtual network you have your NVA your firewall your DNS your ADDS your ADVMs your DNS all the managed services shared services you have in the hub vnet so it will give you 
an isolation okay because everybody wants there is an isolation between their environment for the security purpose for the management purpose and things like that now if these workload do not require the connectivity feature that is fine or if they do you can peer these virtual network as well right okay now let's think about this is the use case the best use case for this architecture now let's talk about the benefit well by centralizing the services that can be shared by multiple resources in or by the multiple environment dev qa prod all are using the same shared services dns ad and vfi and everything of course it will gonna save the cost for you now it could be in a different way you could have these spocks in a same subscription you could have this these spocks in a different subscription so you can check your subscription limits as well and the isolation helps in the security check so these are some few, few benefits of these now let's talk about the components which is required to create or to achieve this hub and spock topology the very first thing is uh, we are talking about the hybrid environment right now okay so in this case that you see on your screen the very first thing is on premises network a private local area network running within an organization a VPN device or service that provides the external connectivity to the on-premises network a VPN gateway or express route gateway we need on the hub network for the connectivity for the VPN tunnel or express route tunnel now hub vnet that's the another component okay one two three four fourth component is hub vnet which is the central point of connectivity to your on-premises network and a place to host services that can be consumed by different workloads hosted in a spock virtual network so you also need the gateway subnet for your vpn gateway uh, and you need Spock virtual networks for sure and you need peering okay now Spocks can be used to isolate workloads in their own virtual network manage separately from their Spocks each workload might include multiple tiers with multiple subnets connected through our load balancers so this is the separate environment so you can have all kind of resources services different subnets management DMZ public private you can use it right now the peering now peering connection are non-transitive okay low latency connections between virtual networks once peered the virtual network exchange traffic by using the Azure backbone without the need for a router we all know that in a hub spoke network topology you use virtual network peering to connect the hub to each spock you can peer virtual network in the same region or in the different region as well okay so these are the components to achieve this kind of topology now we'll talk about some recommendations for example resource groups the hub and each spock can be implemented in different resource group and even different subscriptions right when you peer virtual network in different subscription both subscription can be associated to the same or different azure ad tenant this allows for a decentralized management of each workload while sharing services maintained in the hub okay now if we need to uh, talk about the recommendation for virtual network and gateway subnet well create a subnet named gateway subnet with an address range of slash 27 the subnet is required for virtual network gateway we all know that uh, that's the name and you cannot uh, create or recite any other resource except gateway subnet so allocating 32 addresses to this subnet will help to prevent reaching gateway size limitations in the future so that is a recommendation you 
keep in your mind while you're designing this architecture. A hub spoke topology can also be used without a gateway if you don't need connectivity with your on-premises. You don't need gateway pairing, don't, need, don't require gateway. Now, virtual network pairing is a non-transitive relationship between two virtual network. If you require spokes to connect to each other, okay, if you require this, okay, so I'm sorry, uh, this connectivity, this connectivity, consider adding a separate pairing connection between those spokes. We can create the pairing as well right here in between these two however if you have several spokes that need to connect with each other you will run out of the possible peering connections it would be extremely high administrative uh, workload and uh, you would be out of connections very quickly due to limitations on number of virtual network peering per virtual network okay so in this scenario consider using udrs consider using udrs user defined route to force traffic design to a spoke to be sent to azure firewall on nv acting as a router at the hub this will allow the spokes to connect to each other so what udr will do okay i think i should udr and we do have udr here if these are designed we don't need this because it will make it a little convoluted and we're not sure whether it will come on don't do this to me no 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 no, no. no, no. okay we can create this so this will talk to this with the help of udr this will talk to this and these can talk to each other through this so it would be like this if this vnet wants to talk to vnet 2 it will talk it will go through this with the help of udrs okay and these will connect to each other you can also configure spokes to use the hub gateway to communicate with remote networks to allow gateway traffic to flow from spoke to hub and connect to remote network gateways you must okay Think about these things. When we create the VNet peering, we have the options. What kind of options? In the peering we have. We have allow gateway transit. Whenever you create the peering, we have these options. And use remote gateways. Okay. These things. Now in the peering uh, when we do the peering with the hub hub will always peered with this option enabled allow gateway transit enabled and each spoke would be enabled with use remote gateways okay and we need to also allow okay allow forward traffic to all peering connection all peering connection spoke this hub okay hope this makes sense now now if you don't want the udrs you can also do with the help of this okay all right now let's talk about uh, we a uh, few considerations if you require connectivity between spokes considering deploying azure firewall or an nva for routing in the hub and using udrs in the spock to forward traffic to the hub in this scenario you must configure the peering connections to allow forward traffic also consider what services are shared in the hub 
to ensure the hub scales for a larger number of spokes. For instance, if your hub provides firewall services, consider the bandwidth limits of your firewall solution when adding multiple spokes. You might want to move some of the shared services uh, to a secondary level of hub, just like this, okay? Now, if we need to consider the cost for this architecture, you need to think about the Azure Firewall, which is uh, cheaper than the NVA. 30 to 40% cost is cheaper, and uh, you can use either the fixed rate per deployment hour or you can go with the data process per GB. Okay, the, and it's a cost-effective solution, Azure Firewall, and and the we do the peering for to establish this topology, and peering also includes ingress and egress traffic charges that you need to consider. And if it is in the different zone, then of course the transfer rates are different, so you need to consider that as well. So that's how a hub and spoke topology looks like, and I hope this makes sense now and you would understand when we can use it why we use it okay or to summarize the entire architecture we have the shared services in the hub network and we have isolated different environments in the Spock networks and all these environment are using the shared services and communication as per the requirement of your customer so thank you for watching and you have a good day. Bye-bye.